Good morning, dear friends. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is physiology and pathology of our motor system. Uh, you know uh, that a functional unit of the nervous system is reflex. Uh, reflexes fall into two groups, unconscious reflexes and conscious reflexes. Unconscious reflexes. An automatic instinctive and long reaction to a stimulus that are inborn reflexes, limited by segmental level spinal cord brain stem. Involuntary reflexes of a person correspond to this type of reflexes. For example, knee jog, bicep jog, etc. A conscious reflexes. Uh, these reflexes are formed throughout a person's life. A cortis is obligatory involved. Uh, for example, Pavlov's experiments. At first, we'll draw an arc of involuntary spinal reflex, for example, knee jog. Other spinal reflexes are similar to it. While examining this reflex, doctor taps the patellar tendon with a hammer and observes quadriceps contraction. This is typical spinal arc, arc of spinal physiological reflexes. All our physiological reflexes, uh, knee jog, ankle jog, biceps, triceps, etc., have a similar arc, the same structure of spinal arc of reflex. Uh, there are uh, typical three motor neurons and sensory neurons in this arc. Uh, for example, like an example, uh, let's describe uh, knee jog, uh, like a typical spinal reflex. We tap the gamentum patella. Uh, as a response, uh, it is a uh, uh, contraction of musculus quadriceps and uh, slightly uh, movement of our leg, uh, of our uh, knee. And um, what is the arc of this reflex? Uh, dendrites of first order neuron receive information about this irritation, irritation of ligamentum patella. And uh, this irritation passes via dendrites of first order neurons to the first order neuron. It is a rule, first of the neurons, for all modalities of sensation. We described it, uh, this information during my first lecture about sensory system, uh, allocated only in one place, spinal ganglion. And this is for all modalities of sensation, for all arcs of spinal reflexes, location of first order neurons. Axons of these first order neurons enter the spinal cord and uh, as a rule uh, terminate on uh, the second order neuron which lie in the posterior horn of the spinal cord here. And then information uh, passes to uh, the motor neurons of the uh, anterior horns of the spinal cord uh, and uh, then exit the spinal cord with peripheral roots, nerves uh, and uh, information goes to the uh, musculus quadriceps and contraction of musculus quadriceps uh, provides um, a light uh, extension of the leg. Uh, so this is typical arc of the spinal a reflex. All spinal physiological reflexes we can divide into two big groups, deep reflexes and superficial reflexes. It's very easy, deep reflexes, tendon and periosteal. Where is uh, the point of irritation? And uh, superficial reflexes, skin reflexes and mucosal reflexes. Let's describe some physiological reflexes of the person. 
uh, biceps jerk. Ensure patient's arm is relaxed and slightly flexed. Palpate the biceps tendon with the thumb and strike with the hammer. Look for elbow flexion and biceps contraction, like on the picture. The spinal arc of this reflex is C5, C6, uh, levels, uh, spinal levels and toes. You are to know levels of all physiological reflexes. Uh, this is part of our topic diagnostical process in neurology. Uh, the second physiological spinal uh, tendon reflex uh, this is triceps jerk. A level of this reflex is C7, C8 uh, spinal segments and roots. Uh, strike the patient's elbow a few inches above the olecranon process. This is a point of projection of uh, ligament uh, of muscle triceps. And look for elbow extension and triceps contraction. Uh, the next uh, physiological reflex uh, from the arm, uh, it's not tendon, but periosteal reflex. Uh, this is supinated jerk or brachioradial reflex. Uh, the spinal arc of this reflex C5, C8, segments and roots. Uh, strike the lower end of the radius with the hammer and watch for elbow and thumb flexion. Uh, reflexes from the leg, ankle jerk or Achilles reflex, uh, spinal level uh, S1, S2, uh, segments and roots, tap the Achilles tendon with the hammer and watch calf muscle contraction and plantar flexion. Now, we can use uh, different positions of patient. Uh, their uh, position uh, must be convenient uh, for patient and for doctor and uh, provide uh, relaxation of all patient's uh, muscles. Uh, there are different types of uh, patient's position when we check ankle jog. And finally, knee jog, uh, one more uh, physiological spinal tendon reflex. Uh, or patella reflex, uh, the level of this reflex, uh, L2, L4, spinal segments and roots, ensure that the patient's leg is relaxed, tap the patella tendon with a hammer and observe quadriceps contraction and leg extension. Somewhat about superficial reflexes, a uh, typical example of um, Superficial skin reflexes. There are abdominal reflexes, three of them. Uh, like on the picture, uh, stroke the abdomen lightly on each side in an inward direction above, directly and uh, below uh, the umbilicus. Note the contraction of the abdominal muscles. The direction of our stretch uh, we can use uh, handle of the hammer, for example, uh, or stick, or even our finger, and uh, slightly stretch uh, in supine position uh, with uh, flexion of patient's knee for absolute relaxation of abdominal muscles uh, along uh, the costal arc. Upper reflex. TH7-8, uh, adjust to umbilicus, middle abdominal reflex, TH9-10, and along the inguinal fold, a lower abdominal reflex, TH11-12. Uh, sometimes we neurologists uh, use uh, uh, not TH but D dorsal uh, for thoracic uh, segments, uh, roots, uh, and we say D78, uh, D910, this is the same like TH. Some words about 
pathways about tractus cortica spinalis or pyramidal tracts, voluntary movement supply. Uh, this is uh, the picture of this tract. You see the cortex, spinal cord, uh, spinal cord and a brain stem, different levels of the central nervous system. Uh, there are two motor neurons in this tract. Uh, the upper motor neuron lies in precentral gyrus. Exons of these neurons descend their bundles uh, through their internal capsules, cerebral peduncles, and ventral pons. Uh, through the all brain stem and decussate on the border uh, of medulla oblongata and spinal cord. Uh, the first order in neurons, uh, there are neurons of fifth layer of a precentral gyrus. Uh, there are giant bat cells and exons of these neurons are upper motor neurons of the corticospinal tract. Uh, then, after decussation, fibers go down in funiculus lateralis up to the needed level for the innovation of the needle muscles. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, for example, if we want to uh, move our arm, uh, this is cervical level, a uh, level of cervical thickness. Uh, if we want to move our leg, yeah, this is a lumbar level, a level of uh, lumbar thickness. So on the needle level, uh, the information passes to the anterior uh, horns, to the motor cells of anterior horns. The lower motor neuron lies in anterior horn, exons exit spinal cord with anterior spinal load and go to the muscle. Uh, so, uh, the name of first order neurons of this tract is the upper motor neuron. And if you want, uh, if you are, if I ask you to uh, show, uh, please uh, the uh, first or upper motor neuron. This is not only body cells in uh, the precentral gyrus, uh, but also uh, axons of uh, this motor neuron. So, where is uh, the first motor neurons located? Body cells here and axons, also paths of uh, the first motor neurons up to the second order neurons. Uh, the second order neurons, uh, we said, uh, lie here in anterior horn of the spinal cord and uh, the name of these motor neurons is uh, the lower motor neuron of cerebral spinal tract and uh, this is not only body cells in the anterior horns but also axons uh, of uh, peripheral spinal roots, peripheral nerves and plexuses. Limb weakness results from damage to the motor system at any level from the motor cortex to muscle. Uh, there are two absolutely different pictures of uh, lesion of the upper motor neuron and uh, lower motor neuron. And we will describe the upper motor neuron weakness or central paralysis and lower motor neuron weakness or peripheral uh, paralysis. Uh, but previously, I want to say a very important thing. Um, we also, uh, besides uh, the um, yeah, pyramidal tract or uh, tractus corticospinalis lateralis, uh, have anterior corticospinal tract. Uh, there are two divisions uh, of the uh, corticospinal tract, uh, like on the picture. Uh, the lateral corticospinal tract, or pyramidal tract, we've described and the anterior corticospinal tract. The lateral corticospinal tract neurons cross the midline at the level of medulla oblongata and controls the limbs and digits. The lateral tract forms about 90% of connections in the corticospinal tract. The anterior corticospinal tract neurons, the remaining 10%, stay ipsilateral in the spinal cord 
but did you say it at the level of the spinal nerve in which they exit and control the trunk, shoulder, and neck muscle, and chewing muscle, all muscles exhale, exhale muscles. In case of unilateral cerebral pathology above decussation due to their compensatory function of the anterior corticospinal tract, paralysis develops only in the opposite limbs. The function of the axial muscles like chewing, respiratory, abdominal muscles, pelvic muscles remain intact. In this regard, a person after stroke, typical unilateral stroke or unilateral hemispheric injury can live with paralysis of the opposite limbs, but vital functions are not disturbed. This is very, very important a compensa compensatory function of the anterior corticospinal tract. Semiotics. Monoplegia. Plagia means paralysis. Only one limb is involved. Heavy plagia, both right limbs or both left limbs are involved. So, right side hemiplegia, left side hemiplegia. Paraplegia, both upper limbs or both lower limbs are involved. Maybe upper paraplegia, lower paraplegia. Paresis, not complete like plagia, but partial decrease of muscle power and active movements. Some example on the picture. Uh, for example, this lady has paralysis of this left side arm. Uh, you can see your active movements are limited compared with right arm and this is even plagia. Uh, this is typical paresis, paresis of this left arm of this patient. Стороны руки и вверх. Вверх поднимаетесь, поднимаетесь. Теперь поворачивайтесь ко мне задом. Опустите руки. Руки опустите. Так. Руки в стороны. Вверх. Теперь опустите руки. Руки вытяните вперед. Хорошо. А this is our movie with patient with paresis. Now we will describe clinical picture, clinical sign of lower motor neuron weakness and upper motor neuron weakness. Uh, start from the lower motor neuron weakness. We can observe lower motor neuron weakness when anterior horn lesion, spinal root lesion and plexus or peripheral nerve lesion. Clinical features. 3A. Atonia or hypotonia with diminished resistance to passive stretch. Muscle tone is tested or controlled through the passive movements of extremities. Atrophy or muscle wasting. Wasting becomes evident in uh, the paretic muscle within two or three weeks after the onset. Areflexia, depressed or absent deep reflexes, tendon and periosteum. Um, there may be muscle fasciculation, involuntary contraction or twitching of muscle fibers under the skin, observed when anterior horn sends lesion. I want to show some pictures with examples of um, uh, lower motor neuron weakness. Uh, this picture shows uh, testing of muscle tone, passive movements, passive flexion and extension uh, of extremities. Uh, on this picture you can see the muscle atrophy. Compare delta muscle, for example, of this patient on left side and right side and 
you can see muscle atrophy, very evident. At the same patient with muscle atrophy of shoulder muscles. This is symmetrical atrophy of muscle, this patient. Uh, this is uh, muscles atrophy of distal parts of extremities mm, uh, around ankles. Uh, this patient with alcoholic polyneuropathy. Uh, one more patient uh, with uh, muscles atrophy, scapular muscles, and asymmetry of these muscles. Uh, this patient, young boy, uh, with hereditary disease, a very serious hereditary disease, um, uh, Duchenne uh, muscle atrophy uh, or air muscle atrophy, uh, primary muscle hereditary myopathy, and diffuse uh, uh, pathology, primary pathology of skeletal muscles, muscles atrophy, diffuse muscle atrophy and muscles weakness. Uh, this is uh, the same patient, uh, the very bright picture of muscles atrophy. This is our patient. This is muscle atrophy of tenor. Compare this side and this side. Uh, this is typical Oh, it's not very good. Okay, next, next movie, please. Oh, okay, uh, compare left and right uh, uh, foot uh, and uh, you can see a typical uh, gait. Typical gait, uh, name of this uh, gait uh, with uh, pathology of uh, foot muscles. Uh, is step push, step push, lower uh, motor weakness of foot muscles. Step push of the patient no, with it. alcoholic polyneuropathy. Look no, at his it. slippers. Oh. Step push. Um, uh, this lady has hereditary disease, Charcot-Marie, polyneuropathy, hereditary polyneuropathy, with bilateral stepage of her feet. Uh, uh, this is a uh, boy we described it's his gait. Uh, this is a picture of muscles for circulation. It was said muscles for circulation we can see in case of uh, body cells in anterior horn, spinal arterial horn, motor neurons pathology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Muscles for circulation okay. again. Okay, got it. One more patient with muscles for circulation. Okay, uh, uh, this is muscles atrophy of uh, hand muscles in this patient. One more patient with muscles for circulation. Oh, this is very interesting and very, very, very. Uh, heart disease, uh, lateral amyotrophic sclerosis. This is only disease uh, when we have pathology of both motor neurons. 
the upper motor neurons neuron as well as the lower motor neuron and uh, this is very difficult to treat and we don't have to have um, effective treatment for this patient and this is combination the clinical picture is the combination of uh, the upper motor neuron weakness and lower motor neuron weakness and uh, this patient has atrophy and fasciculation of tongue muscle the same picture another patient and also lateral amyotrophic sclerosis and muscles atrophy of tongue muscle let's describe clinical picture of the upper motor neuron weakness uh, upper motor neuron weakness results from motor cortex lesion uh, brain stem lesion and follicular lateralis of spinal cord lesion clinical signs the first one is hypertonicity the special name of muscle hypertonicity in case of upper motor neuron lesion is spasticity uh, passive movement produce a clasp knife quality of phenomenon uh, when a doctor can feel resistance only at the beginning of movement extension or flexion of limbs uh, the distribution of muscle hypertonicity in extremities upper and lower extremities uh, is not equal in different groups of muscles for upper limbs tone of flexors is more than extensor tone and in lower limbs tone of extensors is more than flexors one this result in the spastic posture with the arm and the wrist flexed and the leg extended Wernicke man posture like on the picture hyperflexion of arm and hyperextension of leg and uh, this patient is after pathological process for example stroke in the contra lateral in this case right side of brain in this case with uh, the leg in hyperextended position our patients with hemiplegia spastic hemiplegia have hemiplegic gait uh, the leg is extended and the toes force downwards when walking abduction and circumduction at the hip prevent the toes from catching on the ground forming a semicircle uh, this is old lady, our patient, after a stroke uh, with typical Wernicke Mann posture with hyperflexion of arm and hyperextension of leg. This is the gait and position of the patient, a little bit dark moving. After stroke. One more patient after stroke. Так, назад идите. Задом. Поворачивайтесь, поворачивайтесь, идите назад. Typical hyperplegic gait. Hyperextension of leg. Назад ко мне, поворачивайтесь, идите ко мне. In case of spastic paraplegia with both lower extremities are affected when patients have uh, lower spastic paraplegia uh, we have diplegic gait stone abduction at the hips can produce a scissors like posture of the lower limbs the hips and knees are flexed and abducted with the ankles extended and internally rotated so knees together feet apart like in this case 
this is patient after spinal stroke with a big leg fluid, lower spastic paraplegia. And very, very bright picture. Иди, 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 смотри на меня, Толя, смотри на меня, молодец, смотри, иди ко мне, иди, иди ко мне, иди ко мне, иди, 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 иди. This boy uh, has cerebral palsy uh, named Little's disease. Little uh, was American doctor who described uh, this disease. Uh, this is a spastic lower paraparesis in childhood after uh, antenatal pathology uh, of uh, mater during maternity uh, and uh, this is very very typical scissors like gait of his boy. Uh, the uh, second sign uh, of upper motor neuron weakness is hyperreflexia uh, of deep tendon and periosteal reflexes. Uh, so uh, biceps, triceps, knee jog, uh, ankle jog are brisk and depressed or absent of superficial reflexes. For example, abdominal and gomastery it may be. Давайте мне уже заканчивается тут. А рефлексия. Так. А здесь мне надо из-за спастики. Спасибо, да. Uh, the main is a plantar response, Babinski reflex, stretch with a stick or a handle of a hammer along the lateral side of the sole towards the big toe. Note the extension of the big toe. Normally we can see only flexion of the big toe. This is typical Babinski reflex of the, on the picture. After stretching of the soul on this picture. And this is spontaneous bilateral Babinski reflex in case of low spastic paraplegia or paraparesis. Uh, next sign of upper motor neuron a weakness, this is clonus, apply sudden and sustained flexion to the ankle or knee, note a few persistent beats. It can be observed while examining knee and ankle jogs, several jogs instead of one jog in normal condition. Mm -hmm. Еще. Еще yes. Maybe clonus of... Еще раз. Нет, что-то не получается, да? Что есть? Там такой клонус, так? О, отлично. Muscle fasciculation and muscle wasting car absent. And I, I want to say again, it was said, dual innervations from each hemisphere results in sparing of the trunk with a unilateral upper motor neuron lesion. So, we described cl typical clinical pi uh, pictures of the lower motor neuron weakness, 3A, atonia, atrophia, atrophy, muscle atrophy, and uh, um, areflexia of deep reflexes. And plus, in case of uh, anterior horn pathology, muscle fasciculation. And we described upper motor neuron weakness, vice versa. Muscles hypertonicity, like spasticity, not equal distribution of muscle tone in upper and lower extremities. Wernicke-Mann posture, clasp knife phenomenon, hyperreflexia, of uh, 
deep reflexes, tendon and periostal, and abscess, absence of superficial reflexes, for example, uh, cremasteric or abdominal reflexes, clonus, positive Babinski sign, and you see there are absolutely difficult clinical picture of the lower motor neuron weakness and upper motor neuron weakness. Thank you for your attention.